ideal logic or ideal vogue, no hot water and how to test. My name is Alan Hart and in today's video we've got a special guest, we've got an engineer from Ideal, from Ideal Boilers and he's going to show us how to test the components inside the boiler with a multimeter to show you um, if you've got no hot water and, and to test the component. After that I'm also going to um, after we've watched that, I'm also going to take the component out myself in this boiler and I'll show you how, how to take it out and, and what it looks like and stuff. What is asked as well is, if you like this type of video, please put some comments below. And, and if you want any more videos like this, um, add your suggestions um, in the comments and, and he'll try and do them for you. Right then, let's go look. This video is for gas safe registered and trainee gas engineers under supervision. Please comply with the current regulations at the time. Hello, I've seen a couple of videos, um, not very informative ones on how to replace or test a flow turbine and sensor on an ideal logic or Vogue boiler and uh, like i said they're not very informative so i thought i would make a couple of videos where i can just to show you how to test it and do it properly so you get the right diagnosis first time so we're going to look at this um flow turbine and hall sensor on a composite ideal logic but this is also the same for the ideal vogue and it is exactly the same test procedure and readings for the brass turbine on the ideal logic and vogue boilers so as you can see they've got three wires three low voltage cables to the turbine and sensor uh, you have a blue red and a black the black is the ground or the neutral should we say the red is the supply the input from the PCB so the, the feed if you want to call it that which is a, a 5 volt DC supply to the turbine at all times when the power is on to the boiler you'll get a 5 volt reading on that red and black and the blue is the signal back to the boiler to tell the boiler that the turbine is spinning and then the whole sensor has picked up the, the movement so what we need to do to test it first off is trace the cable back to the PCB board I have opened up the board and as you can see here these are the low voltage connections on the board this is the board itself to the left is the mains voltage and all these connections down here are the low voltage connections if you look closely underneath you'll see the blue the black and red so there are your connections to the circuit board for the turbine next to it you can see the orange and black they're the connections for the low water pressure switch I'll show you that maybe at another time it's quite straightforward that one but today we're looking at the blue the black and the red I've got my multimeter set up here ready for you and as you can see it's set for voltage DC because we're going to check the power from the PCB first to the turbine so we're looking for 5 volts between red and red and black so I'll have to just put my phone down a minute whilst I so I'm on red and black there for my multimeter and as you can see 4.9 volts DC that's always there when the power's onto the boiler that should always be there if it's not and you've probably got an issue with the circuit board or fuse or power coming into the boiler so now we'll check the supply back to the boiler from the turbine again I'll just have to put my phone down so now I'm on blue and black and as you can see there's no water demand zero volts but I've changed it this is important I've changed the multimeter to AC voltage because as the turbine is spinning um, 
and the whole sensor is detecting is creating a sine wave so the voltage is changed from DC to AC and with no um, with no demand there's no voltage what I'll do now I'll run the tap and hopefully you should see that change so between the blue and black cables on the PCB board you should get a reading of 1.3 to 1.8 volts AC as the turbine is spinning and the pulse sensor is detecting the, the water flow um, the taps running and we're getting 1.6 volts AC so what we can do now to prove that we've got a good flow of water the yellow button on this fluke multimeter will change the readings to a hertz signal so if I press this yellow button on my multimeter you can see now I'm getting 44 hertz which is the frequency of the signal from the turbine the faster I run that hot water tap or the slower I run that hot water tap that hertz signal will increase or decrease with the speed of the flow of water I can't really do it at the moment because I've only got one pair of hands but if I speed up that tap that hertz signal will increase if I decrease the speed of the tap that hertz signal will decrease and that just shows that you've got a good flow of water and the turbine is spinning and it's detecting if you're getting nothing at all from that you know you're getting zero hertz as you're running the tap there's a pretty good chance that that flow turbine is not moving um, also if you're getting an erratic um, hertz frequency if it's jumping between 0 10 20 30 50 back up and down again it's not steady like the one we're seeing here there's a good chance that you cross the hot and cold pipes you see it a lot on new builds where brand new boiler brand new house has been installed and um, they call you with a problem with the hot water you can check the hertz frequency and it's going absolutely mental and that's a good indicator that the hot and cold pipes have crossed So, that's how you test a flow turbine on an ideal logic, ideal valve, brass or composite. Okay, so <clears throat> if after your diagnostics you have determined that this part is the faulty part and you need to change it, you would first isolate the cold water mains either via the valve underneath the boiler or via the stop tap, main stop tap. Open up all the hot water outlets in the property, drain as much water as you can out of it. Um, remove the harness just by pulling it down. Then remove this silver clip, lift it straight up and out. And then what you would do, you would use the clip itself. I've got one here in front of me. You would put the clip inside, if I can get an angle, inside that little section there, which is that piece you'd put, that's part of the housing. So you'd pop the clip inside there on a sideways angle like that, and then use the clip to prise, prise the turbine forward, doing it very slowly, because there probably will, will be a little bit of water in there. Otherwise, you'll find it hard to get the turbine out because it's uh, the the O-ring that holds it in is very, very tight. So you use the clip itself to prise the turbine out of the housing. Obviously, clean up the housing, put a bit of grease on your new turbine, and fit in reverse order. I've got a turbine here. You get the clip and the turbine with it. If I turn it over. That's the part number. So I hope this helps in your diagnosis and replacement of a flow turbine on a ideal logic or ideal valve boiler.
that were absolutely brilliant. I learned a lot from that myself and it just goes to show that by using a multimeter, we can test most of the components and we can, um, instead of changing lots of components, we can test them correctly with a multimeter. So thank you very much for sending that video in. If anybody else wants to send any videos in, then please do. Um, just send me them on WhatsApp, send me a message on WhatsApp. I'll have my details below on here. So any, any um, service engineers or breakdown engineers or anybody who works for a manufacturer, please, please send them in. Uh, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take, this boiler is a couple of years old, so it's been used in the past. So I'm going to see how easy it is to take this turbine out of here. So we'll just lift that clip up. And as I said there, you get your clip. Just put that into there. And that just pulls forward and pulls out. That was quite easy, actually. And that's what that looks like inside. So how that works is, as the water goes through, it just turns that and then obviously that gives you your signal on there so if we have a look inside this we've got a little magnet on the end of there and what that's doing as that as the flow of water goes through there it turns that and then there must be some sort of sensor on the inside of there that senses that going round so it's a really, really clever, really clever idea. Um, if you like this type of video, please click up there somewhere, or is it down there, and click a thumbs up. And please add a comment below. Um, be very grateful for that. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. So we'll just lift that clip up. And as I said there, you get your clip. Just put that into there. And that just pulls forward and pulls out. That was quite easy.